what we'd actually be looking for in terms of something which might slightly surprise markets is perhaps longer term guidance in terms of the actual pace of reduction of buying. So that's what we would really be focused on because our overall impression is that maybe markets are a little bit impatient to actually see larger moves from the BOJ and because of the need to actually um, ensure that deflation is um, permanently defeated, we do think yeah. that they'll probably be a little bit slower to move than a lot of market participants may like. Okay. All right. They're going to be actually slower on hiking uh, rates there. We may have to wait until, I don't know, October for them to go another 10, 15, maybe on the outside uh, 25 basis points. Meantime, though, they're going to focus on uh, tapering JGB buying, right? Let's get to some numbers here from what we've heard. They could go from, what is it, six trillion a month right now. They could uh, chop it down by about 10 percent uh, to five trillion. Is that what you're expecting as well? In the short term, that seems the most likely bet. Um, Given a few more quarters, we think that even going down to say four and a half or four trillion may make sense. Um, so that would probably be the first move. The one thing that um, I would flag though in terms of the overall outlook for tightening is simply that um, once you do get actual real wage growth starting to um, look like it's very firm, um, when the BOJ does actually start to raise rates, um, we actually think that that could be somewhat stimulative for the economy rather than restrictive, just simply because of um, the large proportion of cash holdings from all the Japanese. Um, because if you combine that with some wage growth, both companies and the government are quite incentivized or quite interested in trying to focus a lot of that wage growth on younger demographics. And simply the psychological effect of people starting to see genuine um, wage increases and being able to look forward to those on a medium to long term basis, that could be quite stimulative for consumption. And retirees could actually start to see some income from their cash holdings, which overall could actually be quite positive for the economy. So that's another yeah, thing I'm, that we... I'm, glad, I'm glad you raised the wages issue because herein lies the problem, doesn't it? That, that really, the Shunto wage uh, outcome really captivated uh, international investor interest, but they don't apply to SMEs and therefore the broader economy. So will higher wages really have a material impact on inflation, the right type of inflation, and support uh, the BOJ's exit? So we do think it will take some time. Um, typically, the sort of trend in Japan is that when you start to see economic improvement, that's first reflected in the larger corporates, exporters, um, you know, the sort of household names. And it can often take maybe 12, 18, 24 months before you really start to see that trickling down to SMEs. Um, and we don't really see too much of a reason to expect anything different this time. So we do think that the BOJ will probably focus on seeing at least a little bit of evidence on the SME side before it starts to do anything too aggressive. But just based on history, um, the fact that the Shunta wage negotiations actually were quite positive in terms of um, the direction of wage increases. That is relatively strong evidence that the trend is actually going the way that the BOJ and the government would want. It's just that for that to really take hold and start to um, sort of affect how a typical consumer feels about the economy, that could still take a little bit of time. 